I, 32 female, purposely ignored what my husband, 34 male, told me he wanted for Father's Day. He's ignoring me now and won't accept my apologies. What can I do to make it up to him? My husband and I have been together for the past 9 years. We have 2 kids, an 8 year old and a 6 year old. For Mother's Day, all I wanted was a free day. I wanted my husband to take the kids out somewhere for the day so I could be home alone and relax. Instead, he got me and the kids tickets to have a fun day out. And it was fun and me and the kids had a good time, but it irked me that he gave me the exact opposite of what I'd asked for. For Father's Day, my husband also wanted a free day so he could stay home and game all day. He games all the time with his friends. He'll get home from work, maybe spend the time between then and dinner with the kids before going up to his office to game for a few hours with friends. Instead, I got him and the kids cards for an arcade an hour away with tons of tokens. I gave him the cards during dinner on Saturday so he and the kids could leave early and spend all day playing with them. I got my free day and he and the kids got to make a lot of memories together. He and I got into a fight when the kids went to bed. He was angry that I ignored what he wanted for Father's Day. I was angry that he didn't see that he'd done the same thing to me on Mother's Day. He's been ignoring me since and won't accept my apologies. Quick edit. Some people are thinking that me, my husband, and our kids went out for Mother's Day. We didn't. I took the kids for a day out while he played video games all day with his friends. Am I in the wrong for getting upset when my girlfriend suggested that we split the dinner bill? For context, this is a four-year relationship and we live together. I pay for utilities, she buys groceries, we both split rent and pay for our personal bills on our own. We have a joint account where we save for a future home. Finances has never been a huge issue. My girlfriend and I are not flat broke, but we are in a place where saving money is a priority. She budgets beautifully and is wonderful with saving money. Therefore, it's fair to say that she has more money than I do. My girlfriend makes it a point to make us go out for dinner once a week or every other week. She takes me to places I like or a place we both equally enjoy. She always offers to pay. I always let her. She's not like normal girls who does a check dance but still expects the man to pay. Whenever the bill comes, the waiter hands me the check, and without missing a beat, she always asks, Do you want me to pay? I always agree. I think this is such a nice perk in the relationship. I like when she takes me on dates, it makes me feel good about saving money. I have good food, she spends the whole evening asking about me, complimenting me, and planning our future. She's very sweet and does so much for me. The problem came up last night when she had a huge craving for appetizers and margaritas. She complained about spending her day off cleaning the entire kitchen and she didn't want to dirty any other dishes. She suggested that we go out, and I didn't see a problem with it. We had a great meal. Between the two of us, we had a few margaritas and the bill was adding up. Before the bill came, she asked if I would mount a feast with a check and began to explain how much these nights out are really eating away at her food budget. This is where I got confused. She invited me out to dinner, made the suggestion, and is insisting that we split the check. I would have denied the offer if I knew I would have had to pay. She also jabbed at me for always letting her pay and never once offering. She feels she's being taken advantage of and if it wasn't for her, we would never go on dates because she's the one who makes the plans and pays. Is it really so awful that I don't want to pay for every single date and saving money is important to me? We had a small argument, she got really upset, paid the check, and we walked home without speaking. I said we just won't go to dinner anymore. This suggestion or any other suggestion wasn't helpful. She's been distant and incredibly upset and is now mentioning the weirdest problems and making me feel like a bad boyfriend. She's even mentioned wanting to break up over a $90 check. This is news to me, but overnight, I became an unappreciative and ignorant boyfriend who never helps out or makes her feel special, but we go out for dates every week. So am I in the wrong here? you have a bestie that's a little bit toxic? Story time. Disclaimer, this is my story. When I was 20, I moved to LA. I was so broke, I had four jobs at the same time. I worked at a hookah lounge where I cleaned the toilets and served. I also worked at a Mexican restaurant. I walked dogs and I was a personal assistant. The Mexican restaurant I worked at was on Sunset Boulevard. And boy, oh boy, did I meet a lot of celebrities. On one occasion, I met a girl who was in a couple of movies. Is she in movies now? No, she's not. So I would say she's like an F-list celebrity. She was the type of girl that got everyone's attention, wanted to be the life of the party. And as soon as I walked up to her table, this girl wanted to adopt me. She kept saying things like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. Right away, she was acting like my best friend. It was as if the it girl, the popular girl at high school wanted to befriend me. I fell for it hard and fast. She had a lot of money. And because I was so broke, she would pick me up and take me places with her. She took me to a couple of industry parties. This is where her envy was showing. She introduced me to a couple of people. And by a couple of people, I mean huge celebrities. But you know how she introduced me? You guys, meet my little friend. Her name's Esther. And she's a struggling actress. She works at a Mexican restaurant. I wanted to crawl in a hole and never come out. Part two is up. You know that toxic bestie that we've all had? Story time. Disclaimer, this is my story. After she embarrassed me on purpose by introducing me as her little friend who works at a Mexican restaurant, I wanted to crawl in a hole and die. I was standing in front of a bunch of celebrities while this F-list celeb made me feel so small. But she was also the kind of girl that would recover really quickly. She would start complimenting me on how beautiful I was. So I would feel better about her having just embarrassed me. I would somehow just justify it in my mind. She was also the type of girl that would start telling me all of her secrets. And this is when I made a big mistake. I started trying Trusting her with my own secrets. And this is what those toxic besties want. They want you to trust them so quickly and for you to fall right into their trap. Well, I did. I talked to her about my relationship with the fiance that I had at the time, and I even confided in her about the essay that I had experienced. 
And before I knew it, she started copying my style. My first language is Spanish, and sometimes I answer in Spanish. If you ask me, do you want a bottle of water? Sometimes I'll say si or no. So she started saying si or no. And I laughed when this happened. I quickly realized that I was influencing her more than she was influencing me. On one occasion, she invited me out with her friends. Suddenly, I became the topic of conversation. All of her girlfriends started asking me about my SA and what that was like. And they started bringing up all the issues I had with my fiance. I realized that everything I had told her, she repeated back to them. I felt like an animal in a zoo. They stared at me, asked me questions, and waited for me to answer. They lived for the drama. My drama, to be exact. After that, I realized she wasn't a friend. She was a frenemy. A gossiping, drama-addicted frenemy waiting for me to fail so that she can feed off of me. You know you have or have had that bestie. And if you still do, I think you know what you need to do. When I was a teenager, I used to hang out on the roof of my parents' house, which was not allowed. But my brother, my cousin, and I would go out there and we would like write our names on the side of the house and stuff. We would line up pop cans in the driveway and propel BBs at them with my brother's special aiming stick. Because we lived in the woods and there was nothing else to do out there, which is probably why our annoying little brother would sometimes just spawn in the window and be like, can I hang out with you guys? And we would say, absolutely not. And he would get all huffy about it. And we would say, listen, it's not personal. It's just really dangerous up here. And also, we don't like you like that. And we always had to threaten and or bribe him to keep him from telling our mom that we were hanging out on the roof because we weren't allowed to be up there. The only time I remember us being asked to go onto the roof was when my mom was running a really intense fire drill with us. She put us in various places in the house and ran a bunch of different fire drills with us and told us which exits we needed to go through through depending on where we were at in the house and so she put us on the second floor and she said if there's a fire you need to go out the window and I remember we're all standing on the roof and she was standing on the ground and she was like so basically you just go out the window and you jump because if you break a bone we can fix that we probably won't be able to fix anything that happens to you if you try to run down a flaming staircase it was at this exact moment my annoying little brother decided to put on the show of his life he went um mother from the roof from the roof he was like mother did you ask Kate and write their names on the side of the house. Oh, you didn't? And we were like, shut up, shut up. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. I just don't understand what would make you write your names on the side of the house like that unless mom asked you. So mom, just to be clear, you didn't ask them to write their names on the side of their house. When did you do that? Because they're not allowed on the roof, mom. Are they? Mom, are they allowed on the roof? So when do you think they wrote their names up here if they're not allowed on the roof? I wasn't mad because I thought I was going to get in trouble. I was mad because he was working so hard to get me in trouble. And then it didn't happen. My mom said, well, I'm not happy about that. But if you're going to dabble in vandalism, I'd rather you do it in the house. And then my little brother got mad that my mom didn't get mad. And mind you, we're all still on the roof and she's still on the ground. And he's yelling down at her and he keeps yelling you're not even gonna ground them you're not gonna they're not in trouble because they were on the roof and they're not supposed to be on the roof and my brother and i were like hey man these are some pretty bold words coming from someone who's about three feet from a ledge right now am i wrong for not allowing my friend to move with me and my kids so i am a 32 year old widow to three young children we live in a small but cute three bedroom that is too small for us but due to the cost of living and covid we ended up renting the home longer than expected now the house has a renovated garage type space in the back and about six months ago my friend trish asked if she could stay she had nowhere to go with her two kids so i said that's fine but i would not be renewing my lease this is because i'm purchasing a home well trish has not saved up any money or gotten a job so i reminded her last week that i would start putting in offers on homes we actually put in an offer this past Friday and found out today that I was accepted, so I let Trish know that if things went well, we'd be leaving in 30 to 40 days. She asked me questions about the house and then said the house doesn't have space for her and her kids, but otherwise it was perfect. I really thought she was joking and said that once we get settled, we'll figure out something for sleepovers. Am I wrong for not allowing my friend to move with me and my kids? I thought she was joking, so I said, once we get settled, we'll figure out something for sleepovers with the kids. But Trish seemed totally taken off guard. She said that she didn't think I was really going to move without her and that she had nowhere to go and she would be homeless. So she called her sister and her sister said she can't stay with her because her grandmother already lives there. So Trish is now freaking out and saying that we've all turned our back on her. Her parents also don't have their own place, nor do her grandparents. So I recommended income-based housing, but she said she doesn't want to put her kids in daycare. She told me that I have more than enough money to help her and still buy a house. 
I work two jobs and have busted my butt to buy this house and have enough money for furniture and everything the way I want. I basically told her that I can't help her and the lights will be out September 15th. So, am I wrong for leaving her with nowhere else to go?